citizens of Fort Mascalero. No, we're not. That's where we're heading. Of your own free will? I'm Seth Adams. I'm ramrodding a wagon train through here. Who saw here is Bill Hawks. And I, sir, I'm called a craven. Howdy. How do you do, sir? Oh, Alaris. Alaris! Doctor. Oh. Uh, uh, my dear, this is Major, uh, uh, Train and, uh... Major uh, Adams, ma'am. Uh, and Mr... Hawks, ma'am, uh, Bill Hawks. My wife, uh, Alaris, gentlemen. Thank you. Will you gentlemen be so kind as to join us for dinner? Well, uh, not this evening, ma'am. Uh, you folks seem to be heading east, but... Looks to things I don't think you're going very far. Oh, uh, yes. A multiple compound fracture. Well, we got spare wheels back at the wagon train, but I don't think we got one that'll fit that axle. How long you been here? Day and a half. Uh -huh. What are you uh, figuring on doing? Well, I'm figuring to have a drink and think it over. A brief libation, sir? No, thank you. And you, sir? He doesn't drink either. Well, in that case, gentlemen, if you'll pardon me, your health. Do? Well, I'd intend. 
intended to wait here the rest of the day, and then if nothing occurred, I'd pile what I could on my dray animals and ride on. But it appears that you have occurred, sir. Maybe you haven't noticed, mister, but there's a drought. You can ride 15 or 20 days east of here and you won't find a drop of water. What's up ahead? Six miles ahead lies Fort Mescalero. Nearest water pass there is the river. It's 50 miles by the time you go around by Cattle Dome Mountain Spur. Well, I can give you folks a lift to Fort Mescalero. You can kind of get yourselves outfitted there. In Fort Mescalero, sir, I can get home. Excuse me, ma'am. Let's get this straight. Do you want it back there? More specifically, sir, I'm wanted out of there. Well, you can't go east. There's no water. There's nothing west except the Pacific Ocean. Well, I have nothing against the Pacific Ocean. Have you, my dear? I bow to your good judgment, Doctor. Major, if we may join your train, in return for our transportation, I can offer a compendium of my medical services. Seems to me, mister, you change your head in about as often as a bronco. Major, the only thing that really lies ahead is tomorrow. And tomorrow comes regardless of which way we're heading. considerable weight, and I imagine they'd be distributed among several of the wagons. Over a long haul, perhaps, but just as far as Fort Mescalero, we can haul them all in our wagon. Sir, you know I can't go to Fort Mescalero. I thought we were acceptable to this party. Evidently, I presumed. Doctor, why can't you go there? A matter of professional ethics, sir. I have ethics, too, Doc, and I want to know why. Oh, a man was shot from ambush. Oh, I, I didn't do it. I was called upon to treat him. The position of the bullet rendered the case inoperable. My refusal to consign him to his grave led to an invitation to leave town. You see, the man was... Buck Clayton. And that makes him something different? In Fort Mescalero, it does. The Claytons run this part of the hey, world. Hey! Here we go again. What hey, happened? Oh, oh, Creel, good news, huh? How's the hey. missus? She about ready? Don't know, but I'm scared, Major. Like always before. Doctor, would you mind taking a look at Mrs. Weatherby? Major Adams. In a party this large, there must be at least 50 midwives. Doc, my wife is different. She always has been. Alaris, my dear, would you mind going with this gentleman and looking at his wife? You're not coming. My services aren't needed at this point. I'll stand by. Doctor, you can distribute your goods among the first five wagons. As long as you're on this train, I want you to remember one thing. I run it. Among other things, we don't allow whiskey on this train, 
except that which is used for medicinal purposes. And that we carry on my wagon. Our wagon. An uncivilized restriction, sir. And one that hardly applies to me. Doctor. What's in these kegs? Oh, I am. Uh, that's uh, formaldehyde, sir. I'm going over to the Weatherby wagon to see how she's doing. I'll be back in a few minutes. I want to see the heads of those kegs knocked in. On this train, we don't have any use for formaldehyde. <laughs> Are you a drinking man, Doctor? Hardly. Used to be one myself. Well, you heard what the Major said. Let's destroy it. Up or I can leave it alone. But I get so many chances to leave it alone, I don't see any harm in taking it when it's right here for me. Do you? <laughs> Rose, Mac! Take it easy, Rose. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Oh, on! Say, doctor. You are a real doctor, ain't you? I... Yes. You're just a man I want to talk to. For years, I've been having a little sharp pain right down in the lower part of my belly. Right there. You don't suppose that could be a little touch of that appendicitis, do you? On your left side, sir? Same place, right there all the time. Your appendix, sir, is on your right side. Maybe I got two of them. Once I have double pneumonia. Maybe you folks better stay out of sight while we're in this neighborhood. You might be better off. My dear. Just why'd you put the hole in that bucket? Cause that bucket was full of our water. But my hand was on that bucket. Next time the bullet'll be in you, Grandpa. Grandpa? Major! Stop it! Get up, you're not hurt. If I wanted to hurt you, I'd have hit you hard. Now, what is this about this being your water? 
after all, this water belongs to us. Who's us? My paw. Well, then shoulder up your sidekick, and we'll go see your paw. He ain't my sidekick. He's my brother, Quentin. Well, pick him up anyway. Come on, get up there. Come on, Quentin. Big bully. Get in there, go on. Tableau. I'm sorry, Paul, but we... You seem to have lost your gun. Yes, sir. Oh, see, we... Put been... him down. Yes, sir. We... Been... Take your hand off. What happened to your brother? Well, he got hit in the head with the bucket. What happened to your face? Well, this man give me a backhand swipe, knock me down. Who fired that shot? I didn't. What me? He done it. How many times have I told you that when you hit a trigger, a man had better hit the ground? Well, lots, Paul, but in this case... It I'm sorry I had to push your boys around out there, mister. But they were getting rambunctious. My boys are simple enough without somebody hitting them in the head. It's lucky Junior, my oldest, wasn't there. He'd have killed you. What can I do for you, sir? The name's Seth Adams. Got a wagon train out here. I'd like to get some water from you. You mean you want to buy some water? That's right. Well, you've come to just the right man. How much do you need? Oh, I guess a hundred barrels or so ought to get us to the river. I can accommodate you. Thank you very much. For $25 a barrel. Mister, I don't think I heard you right. You heard me. $25 a barrel. That's piracy! That's the price. I'll give you a dime! Around here, a man can sweat a dime's worth of water. Maybe even 20 cents I'll go. They're not even warm. You trying to hold me up on account of what I did to them boys of yours out there? I'm charging you $25 a barrel because I figure that's about how bad you need my water. That water belongs to the Lord. The Lord didn't dig the wells. I did. And you let all my people die of thirst. Why, let them get thirsty enough to pay $25 a barrel. Or get rid of their excess baggage. And their weapons. Every little bit helps, you know. What about watering my stock? Of course you can. At 10 cents a head. You're still jealous and everything expendable before you reach the river.
feel we're not going to dump anything. I don't care if we have to carry it on our own backs. Now, why aren't you out there scouting where you're supposed to be? You know, if there are any Indians out there, there it's a river. They get thirsty, too. Then why don't you go back and see how Mrs. Weatherby's coming along with that baby she's trying to have? Don't you think that Mrs. Weatherby's having enough trouble without me busting in on her? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Even Ben. Oh, it's coffee, doctor. I uh, thank you, Wooster. You're welcome. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Hey, Doc. We had hey. an accident. Get out of the way, yeah. will you? Let me see. How did you do it, son? I was walking a wheel, and I didn't make it. Can you feel that? Yes, sir. Hurt? Only a little. Is my leg broken? A nice, clean, simple fracture. You gonna shoot me? Oh, I think not. Hawks, what can you get me to use for splints? I can bust up an old chicken crate, Doc. Will that do? Yes, excellent. Wooster? Yes, sir? I need some bandanas or claws I can tear up for bandages. Yes, sir. You gonna cut it off? Cut off a good leg like that? Why, it's just bent a little. Only reason I'd cut off a leg like that is use it for myself. Of course, it might be a mite short for me. It'd be all right if I lived down the side of a hill. I could walk level then. Are you a doctor? Shut off the supply of blood to the brain. It's like fainting. He couldn't have stood the pain otherwise. Hold him tight, Alice. No. no. It's okay, Doctor. I can take it. You already have, son. My man broke a leg. We shot her. Ah, oh, now don't worry, Jamie. The doctor's fixed it. You're going to be all right. Thank you, doctor. What about my dime? That's right. I do owe you a dime. You've been a brave boy. And there it is, bright and shining. Thank you. I was playing on a wagon wheel, slipped off right over a 30-foot cliff, right on my head. That figures.
You know, the way I got it figured, that river's about four miles on the other side of that mountain. And here we've got to ride 50 miles around it to get to it. So? Well, how do we know there's no pass through there? Bill, all I know is I just haven't got time to look for one. Like I told you before, I'm not going to dump supplies so those hogs back at that port can take advantage of our hard luck. You know, those mountains don't look too rough. Maybe we can bridge them. Think you can find a pass over them in the morning? Yeah, maybe. How? Well, all the stock's thirsty. Take a few horses and turn them loose and follow them. I don't know of a horse yet that won't go to a straight route to water. Well, then you better get set for an early start, as soon as you can see. Early start? Ain't they all early, sir? <laughs>
Anything happened yet? Nothing so far. Uh, no thanks to you, you knockhead. to godliness. That's what I like. Hell, fine, beautiful. <laughs> Examine the woman. A caesarean section is indicated. I can't help you. What do you mean you can't help? A caesarean section requires an incision. The jolting of the wagons that pull the stitches loose. Now, when Charlie here cut his arm with a butcher knife, I stitched it up with regular sewing thread and it held. I am not a qualified surgeon. I saw a piece of paper in your little black bag that said different. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Nothing. Me and the missus ain't getting any younger. We've had four children, all born dead. Last one nine years ago. We almost quit hoping. I'd help you if I could. Unless you help her, the woman will die too. All the more reason why it's impossible for me to... These have been poor years, Doctor. Moving from place to place. Losing patience because you won't operate. I can't operate. You know that. I've been able to endure it. Because in the towns there were... There were other doctors people could turn to. Now there are none. That woman... Or that child dies. Far as I'm concerned, you can... You can crawl in that bottle and stay there. Alice, I crawled into that bottle a long time ago. supply you transportation in return for your medical services. That is true. Well? Major? Look at my hand. Try to open. Go ahead. Try to open my fingers. What does that prove? I can't open it. What do you mean you can't open it? I saw you set that little boy's leg. And you knew exactly what you were doing. You opened both hands then. 
That did not entail surgery. What's the matter with you? I don't know. When did it start? I guess you'd say right after the war, but I'm sure it started a long while before then. When I was a boy, I worked in a slaughterhouse. I stood on a little platform over a narrow ramp. When the steers came up, I saw a 16-pound sledge. I paid my way through medical school with that job. You were kind of working at loggerheads with yourself, weren't you? I suppose it was contradictory, but I rationalized that the steers would be killed anyway, and my earnings enabled me to learn to save men's lives. I graduated just in time for the war. Shiloh. 18,000 casualties. In my branch of the service, there was no blue, gray. The colors were bone white, flesh pink, blood red. And then everything was gray-green. And the gray-green was cut away and cut away again. And that it was just gray. And my knife rose and fell like that 16-pound sledge. In that one campaign, 72% of my patients died. 500 white crosses carved by my knife. When did it start, Major? But those soldiers, shocked, the gangrene, the lack of supplies, that wasn't your fault. Whose fault was it? Theirs? The condition? The doctor doesn't blame the patient or the condition. I failed. I should have known more, been more adept. Don't you know as much as the next doctor? It wasn't enough. They should have given me a sword instead of a scalpel. You won't find much help at the bottom of a barrel. Perhaps not. You make me think I'm talking to the eighth wonder of the world. And that is? A living man without one single solitary gut. Who do you think you are to sit in judgment of yourself? What makes you think that you ought to be infallible? You aren't the only man that was at Shiloh. You're not the only man that ever wanted to push his memories back into a bottle and put the cork in. What right have you got to make yourself personally responsible for the war? I was at Shiloh. I had 223 men. Every one of them friends and neighbors. I came out with 17. And you're going to stay drunk all your life. Because 28% of your charges lived. I'd like to bet you didn't know the name of a single one of them. Come on, let's have some coffee. Come on. Come on, sit down. It's hot, Doc. Leave the pot sit right there, Charlie. Let me tell you about a fellow that I knew once. 
Well, I tried to solve his problem the same way you're trying to solve yours. He's in the army. Captain. Resigned his commission six years before the war. I was in a little town in Illinois, Galena. Bill Ox and I had a little lumbering outfit. Hold it, Bill. Mm. Hey, look at there. Ain't that Sam? Sure looks like him. Hey, Sam! <laughs> hey, Sam, where in tarnation have you been? What have you been doing? And I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I just came home, that's all. Hey, I'll buy you a little drink later, huh? Seth, I guess you came to the right man with that offer. kicked out of the army. Folks say he was doing a little too much drinking, a regular drug. Yes, they couldn't stand him no more. Well, you couldn't expect much else. You know what folks say? He never was no good. Yeah, folks do say, don't they? Of course, you can't always believe what folks say. <laughs> For instance, Seb, folks say that your poor old ma died in the workhouse. I don't believe the whole on there, Hank. You know what folks are saying about your young sister, don't you? Folks say she's working at a dance hall down in St. Louis. I don't believe that, Hank. But that's what folks say. Get over, Bill. <laughs> Sam didn't get much of a welcome from his father. His people were a pretty hard-bitten lot. Didn't have much use for people who were short of cash. Oh, I guess I can see their side of it all right. After all, old Sam didn't come home rich or covered with glory. Of course, I'll help you. I can't throw you out even though you are a failure. You can go to work in my store starting tomorrow. Twenty-two dollars and fifty cents a month and you could take it or leave it. That's more than twice as much as a private makes. You think I'm worth it? Only time will tell. Would you excuse me, please? I must put the children to bed. With your permission, Father. I'm sure you gentlemen would prefer to discuss your business in private. Hi, Sam. Good afternoon, Bill. Hey, uh, how much is saddle worth, Sam? Oh, it's worth about fourteen dollars. We're asking thirty-two fifty for it, Phil. What do you want with the saddle? Buy yourself a horse? Why not? I'm a Seth Adams militia outfit. Expect to make corporal. <laughs> corporal in an infantry outfit? You got to make general to be able to ride with that bunch. Oh? Yeah, what you need is this. Good pair of boots. Be doing a lot of walking. Well, Mr. Hawks, how are you this afternoon? Interested in the saddle? <laughs> you know, there's a mighty fine one right there. I can let you have that saddle for $40. Well, Sam, you said you're asking thirty-two fifty. Okay, <laughs> Sam makes mistakes. See, he isn't cut out of the business exactly yet. <laughs> no, Bill. As long as it's you, 
I'm going to let you have that saddle for $38, and it's worth every penny of it. Now, forget now there's a war coming on. Prices will be going up. You know, Bill, you're going to be a leader. You're going to need a rig like this when you're commanding your troops. Well, uh... I'll let you know about it. Well, now, keep it in mind. Don't forget, $36. You couldn't buy it. Come on, line that straight. Stand up. Well, look at this fella here. Look at here. Now, this is the way you're supposed to be set. Come on, get back in line there. Now, we're going to do carry on. Attention. Carry That's the way to do it. Now we're going to do right face. Give me a beard, Joe. I swear I got 20 men out there with 43 feet. Just drilling soldiers. Ha. What's your rank, sir? Sergeant Major, Sam. And you better get rid of those Brigadier General stars. Oh, I thought they looked kind of good. <laughs> How'd you get to be Sergeant Major? Because I can lick every man in the outfit, that's why. You can lick boys, sir. You get to lead men. I'm not doing that, am I? No. Sam, I could use every bit of help I could get. Would you be willing to try? I'd be willing to try. Oh, good. Here, take my knife. Finish your drink and we'll go have Adam. No, I, I don't need the knife. I don't need that drink either. Let's go, sir. Oh, all right. <laughs> Hey, now, you fellas. Come on. Get in line there. We're... Come on. Get in the line, will you? Get in line. Line up here. Come on, you fellas. Now, listen to me, will you? Come on. Line up there. Old Sam here is going to help us with our soldiering. I want you to pay strict attention to him. All right, Sam. Company, it shut. Take your post, Sergeant. Well, Sam, I, I'm kind of top dog right here. Set your places to the right of column. Take your post. Yes, sir. Top dog, huh? Now, gentlemen. Is that you, Tim Malloy? Yes, sir. Three paces forward. Good to see you, Tim. Mexico, Chapultepec. Now, gentlemen, I want you to watch a regular execute the manual of arms. Right, pace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Order, up, halt. Malloy, you're now acting first sergeant. I thank the captain. Well, Sam, have you... Dylan's in the ranks. In about a month, Sam had just worked wonders with that bunch of bedraggled misfits. <laughs> they were ready for anything, and it was just in time, too, because the Rebs had fired on Fort Sumter, Civil War was on. I was a proud man that day standing on that platform, saying goodbye to our congressman, the mayor and his wife, and our friends and neighbors. Say, Sam, where are you going, huh? I'm going with you, for Springfield. I got a job in the governor's office. Clerk, uh, sharpening lead pencils. Glad you're going along with it. Bye. Uh -huh. Do 
was discouraged. No. You'll be home soon. I'll be back. looking for my wounded. What's your outfit, soldier? It was the second Illinois Volunteers. The second? Galena boys. You get a light set. Say, what in tarnation you doing here? run out of lead pencils. I managed to wangle my way back into the army. Well, I'm sure glad to see you. That makes 19 Galena boys made it today, including us. <laughs> remember Tim Malloy? Sure, I remember Tim. You made him your second lieutenant. That's right. Got himself killed today. Had three kids. Hey, Sam. How'd you like to take over his job? I don't know, Seth. After today, I'm not so sure I'm qualified to be a second lieutenant. Sam, we could sure use a trained man. Me and my boys would sure like to have than you, Doc. He used that responsibility to redeem himself. It isn't often a man gets a second chance. What are you going to do with yours? Major Adams, I've asked myself that question a thousand times. Is this the first time anybody else ever asked you that question? What am I going to do with a hand that can only hold a knife that way? You can cut your throat. is waiting. Third 
18 pounds. Now, Mrs. Craven, really, how much did that baby weigh? Well, seven pounds. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And you too, Doc. <laughs> uh, Major, carried these for 20 years. Good. Two for a nickel. Well, thank you, Weatherby. <laughs> thank you, sir. Mr. Hawk. Thanks, Creel. Thank you. We had in mind to name him after Robert E. Lee. But Myra and I would like your permission to name him after you. Well, that's a very great compliment, sir. But I would prefer that you name him after a very special hero of mine, Ulysses Simpson Grant. Why, well, that's a Yankee name, so? <laughs> Ulysses Simpson Grant Weatherby. That's sure a mouthful of name for a little fella like that. Sure is. Have you had one yet? Nope, not yet. <laughs> hey, Slim! Haven't you got any work to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, then you go do it. Yes, yes. And what do you get paid for? So you can yawn. Oh, get up. All right, everybody. Let's get our teams hitched up. We pull out of here in 15 minutes. Come on, we got a river to cross. Why, yes.